I'll be chairing this meeting today. Uh, Kate is uh, in the, uh, unavailable. So we're going to get going in just a second. Uh, I'd like to call this meeting of the Montpelier Development Review Board to order. It is 7 p.m. Um, May the 17th, 2021. Um, Meredith, I believe this is the point where I turn it over to you to go through your uh, exp explanation of um, the remote meeting procedures and processes and yeah. uh, related, related okay. questions to that. So it's, it's all yours. Thank you, Kevin. So I'm going to share my screen for everybody at home um, and get our fun little slideshow going. Um, so for anybody who is watching this um, on ORCA from home and who is interested in speaking tonight or otherwise getting involved, um, there's a link here, and this link does not have the spaces that have been causing the problems for everybody. Um, and then you can also call in using this phone number with this meeting ID to actually get into this particular meeting. Um, anybody who is having problems accessing the meeting, please email me. The email address is right down here at the bottom. Um, if you're actually in the meeting, and having issues, please make sure to chat, use the chat function on Zoom to, to talk to me about that. Um, we're going to try and keep the chat to those technical difficulties, um, but it will be added to the public record if it's used. So the Zoom meeting is being recorded as well as streamed live via Orca Media. Turning on your video is optional. All public testimony tonight will be taken verbally. Um, and the chat, as I said, the chat function should be used only for troubleshooting or logistics questions. Please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This reduces background noise. If anybody does decide to participate by phone, you can use star six to mute yourself and that will actually let us know on Zoom that you're muted and not just not wanting to talk. Um, if anyone's interested in speaking on a particular matter and we don't know what matter that is, um, please raise your hand. Um, either physically if you're on video or using the raise hand button on your toolbar if you're in Zoom, or you can use star nine if you're on the phone and that'll do a little raise hand so that everybody else can see. Um, if for some reason that's not working, please feel free to unmute yourself and state your name if you're at a break in the discussion. And then once the chair has recognized you to participate, um, please unmute your microphone, confirm that you can be heard, provide your full name and address for the record. Um, and then we ask that you try and keep your questions or comments to a maximum of two minutes. Um, you can potentially be given more time later on. It's just we want those initial comments to be about two minutes. Um, and then members will have the opportunity to respond or ask questions. Um, if the public is unable to access this meeting and I get notification of that, which would be via email, most likely, but maybe even via phone, then the meeting will be continued to a time and place certain. If anybody is having connectivity issues while they're in Zoom, please try turning off the video function or closing other applications that might be open on your phone or computer. Um, for anybody watching from home who wants to try and look at the documents, or anybody who's having issues with screen share, you can get all of the items um, for tonight's agenda on this link. Um, please note that all votes taken during this meeting will be done by roll call vote. I am now going to hand this back over to the vice chair, Kevin. Um, and I would just uh, add uh, as part of the procedures uh, during this time of uh, uh, COVID-19, uh, 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 um, situation that all testimony is taken in open session, uh, although all decisions will be made in deliberative sessions, uh, a closed, which is a closed process. And that is, doesn't matter if it's a, if it's a very minor application or an extremely detailed and complicated, we're treating them the same, uh, just for this period of time, uh, until we get back, uh, uh, to uh, uh, the usual uh, 
process. So I think um, I think we've covered all that unless somebody has anything to to add. And uh, if not, uh, I will entertain a um, a motion to approve tonight's agenda. So moved. Okay, by uh, a motion by Rob. Do I have a second? Second. And I'm sorry, who did that? Was that Gene? Oh, Gene. Okay, very good. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, roll call vote is is taken for the for all decisions. And um, please raise your right hand when I call your name. Uh, Rob. Joe. Rob. Claire. Jean. Oh. And um, Abby. Yeah. Have I covered everybody, uh, Meredith? Yeah, I think so. I think that this is assuming those were all yeses on the. Right. And I'm thinking the last couple of meetings, we've actually been saying yes rather than just the raise the hand. Yeah, so, I think the raise the hand was the introduction. We've been introducing people, but it's okay. So, so be it. We'll, we'll, we'll use yes or no in the in, in the, uh, votes uh, from this point forward. Uh, so the agenda is approved. Comments from the chair. The only thing uh, is uh, I'll mention is that I am acting as chair uh, being the vice chair since the since the chair is unavailable this evening, um, and also the next item on our agenda is the review and approval of the minutes from May fifth, twenty twenty one. I just had um, uh, I think one one sentence maybe missing a word or um, it's possibly could remove it all together. Um, so the roof runoff will run into a rain garden type maybe structure or uh, um, feature is missing uh what sentence are you on per first paragraph second to uh, third to last sentence of the um town hill road oh sorry i'm looking on the first page uh <laughs> oh yep I think it's supposed to be rain type, like, yeah, it's like a rain garden type plantings, maybe. So yeah, I will fix that. Thank you. Okay, with that revision, is there any other mm -hmm. comments or corrections? Then I'll entertain a motion. It looks like, hold on, I think Claire has something. Oh, Claire, I'm sorry. Uh, I was just looking at the, Second page, last sentence um, that's above other business, where it says the motion passed five to zero, but two people voted no. Thank you, five to two. Uh, somebody's got some background going on or something. There was humming. cleared up. Thank you, Claire. Okay, with that, I'll, with those corrections, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Motion to approve the minutes. Okay, made by Jean, and do I have a second? I'll second that. Okay, and second by Claire. So, the roll call vote, and, and just say yes or no. Uh, from this point forward. Rob? Yes. Joe? Yes. Claire? Yes. Jean? Yes. Abby? Yes. And I also vote yes. So the uh, minutes from the last uh, meeting of May 3rd with revisions has uh, been approved. Okay. Now, uh, moving on to the continuation of the Town Hill Road uh, review of construction for a two family home on steep slopes. And um, 
I know there's a bunch of new material to be introduced this, this evening. Um, so we're going to want to very carefully examine that and uh, make a determination as to its applicability for uh, action tonight or whether action would be um, after some addition, after additional uh, uh, testimony, but that remains to be seen. I have not, I have not myself, have not had a chance to, to review these new documents in detail. Um, so what I think I would like to do to proceed is first hear from the uh, from the applicant or or Meredith, what what's your thinking on this? Do you want to talk first before we get into that? Um, I, I think you know maybe just have me do a quick little summary of where we were at the end of the last meeting, and then go to the applicant to talk about the that. Mission. That makes sense to me. I yeah, that 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 was the uh, hesitation I, I suddenly had as I was. Uh, talking about proceeding, I thought perhaps we should hear from you first. So please, just a short summary, and we'll get back into detail uh, down the road. Yeah. So as you said, it's a it's a it's basically a two-family home. There's a single-family home and an ADU. Um, there are steep slopes involved, but those are mainly down around the road and um, you know along the ditch and then up near the driveway. Um, but there were stormwater concerns with this particular parcel, with it being generally sloped. And that's what it seemed to be most everybody's concerns were and the main issue for sending this back to get more detailed input from the Department of Public Works um, and some, some revisions to the plans. Um, we have had those revised plans and if Matthew needs me to share them, I can or he can share them himself. Um, and then we've had some comments on those revisions from the Department of Public Works that once we get through the revisions, I'm happy to share with you. Um, both there's some some items that might be more related to DPW permits, but also some things that go straight to the erosion control and stormwater protections. So if you're good, Kevin, I think it makes sense for Matt to. Yeah, OK, I, I just want to say I, I, I'm real concerned that we pay t enough attention to the details. And uh, um, so anyway, let's proceed. We can make decisions uh, as as uh, as is appropriate. So Mr. Lewis, uh, would you like to give us the uh, perspective from uh, the applicant's viewpoint? Thank you, Mr. O'Connell. Um, I can share my screen to review uh, the three new documents that were provided as an amendment to the existing application. Would that help? Sure. Yeah. Okay, you guys can see my screen okay? Not yet. Nope. Now let's try. Yes. Yeah. Better? All right. Yeah. So the the first document in question is uh, titled 51421 Revised Lewis EPSC Plan. Uh, that's where the majority of changes have taken place that um, I believe the DRB would be of, um, interested in. So some of the questions that came out of the previous DRB meeting revolved around comments that had been made by Department of Public Works regarding a lack of visibility or understanding of how water would flow out of the site and whether or not it would impact any um, any abutters or, or downstream. Um, and I, there was some consideration given in a previous drive, but it wasn't clear in the drawings that were presented to um, as to exactly how that would go. At least DPW couldn't fully understand it and it asked for more details. So we revised the drawings and there's the reason there's two sets of drawings. Two of the drawings are actually from the engineer, uh, Grenier Engineering. Um, those are changes he, he made based on the commentary that I provided to him. Um, but they don't necessarily incorporate all the changes that were requested. So I did provide a, a revision to two of the drawings that were in the original package that I believe may indicate more clearly what those um, changes encompass. So the first two I'll go through are the revisions from Grenier Engineering. And then the last one I'll go through is the one that I provided. Um, so in this drawing, um, as you can see on the one of the one of the big concerns with was how would stormwater get 
directed so it didn't impact the adjacent property. Um, and so what was decided is, and, and it's not indicated super clearly on here, but there is a, a swale that prevents water from running off to the side. This is actually supposed to be indicated as a ditch, um, a stone line ditch. Every 10 feet, there's a, a check dam of larger stone to prevent that runoff from reaching a high enough velocity to, um, to either cause erosion here or um, to you know, cause a high level of runoff to come into the, the actual ditch that's adjacent to the road. Um, so that's, I think, the biggest change that's happened on this drawing with respect to, um, with respect to runoff. You can also see it's indicated here, the splash pad. I'm sorry, this is, um, let me try this guy here. That's better. Um, the splash pad is now indicated. Um, so it's a little bit more clear exactly how that, um, that detail is going to get addressed. Um, and those are, those are the primary changes that occurred here. Um, the, this drawing also, I, I had him add the sewer line and water lines. Uh, there was an error made. Um, unfortunately, I got these drawings on Friday. They haven't had out of time to make a revision to it. Um, there's actually an existing water shutoff right about here, at the, almost at the center of the drive, right on the, the right at the edge of the right of way. And so that's what we're planning to connect to with the water line. And it'll be a single water line. You'll see that in the, the other drawings. Second drawing is, uh, sorry. Second drawing is the revised slopes analysis. Um, as you can see, not a huge amount of difference from the previous submittal. The majority of the steep slopes are still in the indicated area, which as of today are considered steep slopes. Um, so not a lot of changes with respect to that. Um, the one thing that I did want uh, Grinny Engineering to add, which was not indicated. Um, so, so the submittal that I provided consists of revisions to two sets of drawings. One of them is this first page. The submittal is just to correct a, an error in the um, in the, um, the, t the the topographic lines and the elevations that are shown. So they now match the drawings that Grenier provided and that the surveyor provided. Uh, it was just an error on my part, setting the datum for the drawing set. The second drawing is the one where you'll see actual changes. Let me just zoom in here a smidge. So this is a stormwater erosion control detail, if I could get it to zoom in, which it won't. There we go. So you can see the same kind of idea. I, I don't have the tools at my disposal like Grainy Engineering does, so it's a little bit harder for me to illustrate. Hopefully the check dams made it clear and those will show up on a revised version of the drawing that what I'm proposing is that we, you know, we, we get conditional approval today based on some minor changes that need to be made um, based on feedback that we received from Department of Public Works. Um, so what Zach had stated was that he wanted to see this indicated as a ditch. So I've indicated here is a stone line ditch to contain six inch stone at 10 foot intervals. So that would be nominal three inch stone lining the ditch with check dams every 10 feet consisting of larger stone. It also indicates here the stormwater flow um, in the pervious driveway itself to show that it's not spilling over the edge of this slope here. Um, by design, it's intended to flow down following the contours of the driveway itself and then exiting at the bottom here. Um, of course, it does retain a significant amount of water itself, but were it to exceed its carrying capacity, this is the direction that it would go. Um, and so that's, um, I think that's pretty much it for all oh, right, so the utilities, this is what I provided to Don to update his drawings. So there is only a single connection to the utilities. Um, it's just the one six inch tie into the eight inch sewer line. And then it shows here the one inch water supply coming into existing city water disconnect. All the utility connections between the two prop, the two residences will be handled within the physical dwelling itself, um, within the residence. Um, I think the other question was around a foundation drain. I don't know if we had included that in the previous submittal, but that is indicated in these drawings um, that there's a foundation drain that um, runs from the accessory dwelling unit out and towards this area in here near the, uh, the main area flow next to the road right away. Um, I think that's it, uh, unless there's 
anything, I mean, if you have any questions about changes that have been made, um, feel free to ask them. Well, Matthew, take, thank you for taking the time to demonstrate and satisfy the request. I mean, this is exactly what we're looking for, all these, all those specs and with details, just to uh, appreciate it. Thanks, Jane. I just had a, had a couple questions. Um, first of all, so this um, these plans you got up right now, did those get mm. distributed, or are these just for conversation purposes? These were provided at four o'clock this afternoon, and I'm sorry for the lateness of the okay. hour, but um, I did try to get them as quickly over as I could once I saw Zach's commentary, and uh, the intention was try to to try to address some of those in an early yeah. draft, so okay. that um, and. As I mentioned, you know, the final submittal for plan approval through DPW would have these revisions applied to both, the, you know, this drawing set, which is part of the public record, but also to um, the submittal that um, Grenier Engineering is is working on. So DPW only got to see these at four o'clock this afternoon, or uh, I'm a little confused on that. No, so DPW has reviewed these and provided commentary. This drawing here, and this drawing here, and. Um, I don't know, Meredith, if you wanted to walk through the commentary and then I could describe um, if needed, you know, what the response was. This is a response to some of the questions that he had or, or comments that he had um, that are going to provide direction to um, to the engineer. Kevin, would you like me to step up here on this one? Yeah, I would. I would. Yeah. So, yeah, so the first the first two drawings that Matthew showed um, were circulated to DPW on Friday. I got them to you as soon as I could today when I saw them because I left the office on Fridays. Um, well, and let, me, let me just say right at, at that point, I, I, I didn't see them until right before the meeting. Yep. So, I mean, yep. you know, four o'clock in the afternoon is not exactly a lot of time to review. Yeah. So these, so, so, but DPW had these first two from Grenier last Friday. Um, and so Zach Blodgett, who reviewed the first set from the initial application, was able to go back through them. Um, and uh, you know what, do you want me to just read them or do you want me to have read them and have them on the screen? So um, I actually think I have them on screen right here. Okay. I can okay. zoom in a smidge. I know it's not easy for, I can't read it when it's on a Zoom call and it's. Yep. You do that and I'll read, my, read them, but that okay. way. If anybody can see them, it helps. So the first was that the grass swale indicated on the site plan, right? So the document from Grenier says it's a grass swale, should be a stone ditch with check dams based on the slope of the ditch. The approximate percent slope of the ditch is around 13%. So then you know, Matthews addressed that with his most recent document that I wasn't able to circulate around, making sure it's clear it's a stone ditch. Um, and the second bullet was based on slope of the ditch. The stone check dams should be permanent and not temporary. Um, he also says he would like to see the proposed swale connect to the existing ditching. So that's the existing ditching, I think, along the road um, and show how the two ditches will connect together. Um, Department of Public Works would prefer to have only one water connection. Um, and that's really something that's a DPW permit issue not really something we look at in zoning, but Matt has addressed that. Um, same with the water shutoff. Um, showing connection detail for the sewer connection. Again, that's a DPW permit issue. Um, then stabilized construction entrance should be required for construction. So that's an erosion control matter. Um, and it's something that is one of the standard erosion control practices that we hold um, projects to when the erosion control uh, provisions are triggered. Construction should follow State of Vermont Low Risk Erosion Handbook. Um, again, we've incorporated a lot of those provisions, but I, that's something that we could definitely include as a very specific condition on approval. Um, silt fence should be placed along contours and perpendicular to runoff. So clearly DPW wants some more silt fence detail before they um, have final sign off on it. And then um, his final comment was that the stone check dams, so this is in that ditch, uh, should use a mixture of two to nine inch stone. And I think that's what Matt has already commented on. Um, 
Okay. Okay, so I guess a couple of questions um, of a general nature. Uh, Matt, are there anything in what uh, DPW has has brought forth here that you have a, any difficulty with or, or a problem with? No, I mean, I think the, going back to the drawings that I tried to incorporate those comments on, um, you know, the only, I, I think that the piece that will be, you know, probably hardest to indicate on a drawing, um, not so hard to indicate, not so hard to achieve on site is showing how the flow actually, it's not flowing uphill here, but it's flowing across the contour before it intersects. That's something that I'd asked um, the engineer to to address um, in the first set of drawings. And um, I think that they, they missed the message as well as you can see the silt fence is not the same shape. Um, so those are things that I was trying to get him to, to focus in on. Um, so it did take a while to get the drawings. Um, I guess they're really busy which is why I wanted to provide these. It's, I sure. can react immediately um, to these questions, um, but because I've already submitted engineer stamp drawings, his drawings and my drawings need to be harmonized. Um, these are the public record, but they can't, they can't conflict with each other. So, um, so but that's the detail you can work out. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, board members, any, any, anybody have any comments, observations? Yeah, um, I don't know. I just I just have a little bit of a, a concern here with the two different sets of drawings, and I don't really know exactly which one. Um, one of them shows one foot contours, and one of them shows two foot contours, and we're showing grading. So I don't know if you could address that. I can revise mine to show two foot contours. The the difficulty I've got, Rob. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm using a point file that was given to me by an engineer and I'm using a tool called Revit, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Yeah. Revit is not, it's not CAD. Um, yeah. So, you know, my first mistake probably was just to generate um, topo lines to begin with. I did it so I would understand how the house would fit into the, um, into the lot. And when I submitted it, that's kind of cats out of the bag, right? So they're a part of the public record now. They're not really as representative or as accurate or as, um, as good, I guess, as the ones that come from Grenier, right? Um, he's got civil CAD, so um, sure you're from with the tool, but it's really hard. I can't draw a curved line, for example. Everything wants to make jagged edges. Um, I can make it two, two foot contours if that would help, but um, I think it would be difficult to be able to like put one on top of the other and make a match perfectly, um, just because they're they're different software packages and. Um, Revit handles. No, I think I think you've gone above above and beyond. And I mean, I think that my suggestion is just the opinion of one member of the board is that, you know, what you've done are really should just be treated as you know figures for explanation and conversation, uh, and that the plans of record are be um, you know the Grenier um, engineering uh, plans. I think that what you did is incredibly helpful, um, but I think that I look at the um, the requirements for steep slopes, which is kind of like what triggered us to get here. Um, and, uh, you know, I think all my concerns are, uh, relieved, uh, by just looking at the Grenier, um, engineering plans and, uh, what you did is, is, is wonderful for, um, uh, conversation purposes. Thank you. Hey, anybody else? I, just so you know, the screen that I have in front of me right now, I'm, I'm seeing the contour plan and I'm seeing some of the, some of the members of the DRB and, and, uh, the others. Uh, but um, I've got five people here. I don't know how you how I fix this. Matt, can you just take off share screen at this point? Absolutely. If we see it again, we can open it back up. There we go. Okay, that, that's a little bit better. Um, so anybody else? I'd like to yeah. make, sure we, uh, make sure that we hear from uh, from the Frasers or anybody else who wants to be heard. Hey, Kevin, this is Abby. I do have a question about how the runoff from the drive connects in with the the ditch at the bottom between the, the property and the road. Do you want me to share screen again so I can explain? Yes, that go helps. ahead. Okay. Something that helps explain it. I mean, it's there's the arrows, but we might need a little more. Yeah, so if I go back to the drawings, and again, this is what I want uh, to be indicated on um, Grenier's drawings. 
Um, you can see the storm water flow. I hate this tool. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, you go. I need to share screen again. Oh, right. Share screen. Let's click the share button. I'm used to it automatically doing it in Teams. Sorry. Different oh. tool. I'm not, well, a, I'm not a Zoom some, user. We got I, you I got somebody's screensaver here. Yeah, we got your desktop only. Oh, there we go. My whole screen. That's what we wanted. Let's try that again. Unreal. There we go. Is that better? Yes. That was the coast of Ireland, by the way. Great, wonderful nice. place. That was a really amazing sculpture. The, I was balancing rocks on the beach one day. That was that was a challenging one. <laughs> you did that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a wow. It lasted all like ten minutes, and the breeze blew it over. Um, <laughs> so anyway, so this the intersection here. This is where the any overflow would would come out. So it does it does end up in the same ditch at the road. Right. Yeah. So ultimately, um, you know, any stormwater system at some point is going to overreach its capacity and overflow. Um, yeah, how big you size it, again, this would involve more in-depth analysis than, um, than was asked for in the previous meeting. But, um, you know, I can tell you how many I think it's approximately three and a half inches of rain can be held in this structure right here. So it would take a pretty significant event. And I know we've had them. We've had them here in Barrie. I used to live in Montpelier and we had a waterfall going through our basement at one point. Um, you know, we've had five, six inch rain events. Um, but this will, the majority of your severe rain events, it's going to capture that and prevent it from overflowing. Abby, does that uh, answer your immediate question? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean, ultimately, ultimately DSBW has to be, has to be happy with how that, how that fits together. So um, I want to make sure that um uh could, could we have full screen back again? sorry that's Keep okay. forgetting there we go yeah is there is there anybody who anybody here who uh would like to be heard this evening on this on this uh, application besides there's the phrasers of course and anybody else um mr higgins is on for for this um so if either of them want to speak up you guys can raise your hands and Sure, you, you've been sworn in previously, I believe, so we don't need to go through that again. So who would like to hear, who would like to be heard? Anne? You're, you're on mute. Uh, Mr. Higgins, hold on one second. I think, uh, I think the chair called on Ann Fraser, so give yes, her one. Yes, Ann Fraser is first, but we first have to figure out how to get get Ann off of uh, mute. Uh, yeah, I can't do it for her, unfortunately. I don't think I can. Yeah, no, it, depending on how people sign in, sometimes I can undo it and sometimes I can't. Um, I think, Bill, Ann, I think you might need to go back out and come back in. Can you try that? Okay, we'll be patient. All right, we did it. Okay, we did it. Good. Awesome. And we didn't have to call one of our kids. <laughs> Isn't that great? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, you know, I don't understand all the, the technicalities where our driveway is, you know, right across from um, Matt, where your driveway is going to be. So that, you know, that just remains our lingering concern is um, I understand there's a little bit of an exception made. Normally it's what, 45? Oh, well, the distance of the driveway. The distance of the driveways. And, um, but it's it's more the runoff than the distance actually it's just so what you know 
neither of us are particularly technical, but no. watching the, so I think the question that Abby just asked was really mostly relevant to us yeah. because if it's coming down and then there was a sort of an arrow, here's where it's going to go. And it sort of pointed right at our driveway. Yeah. <laughs> that's, so, that's our concern. <laughs> so, um, uh, so I think, you know, um, and as I said, our house, our next door neighbor had a very significant damage from runoff coming off that hill. Now, that not anything to do with that, but just we have had those types of things uh, here. So we're that's our concern. You know, uh, as I mentioned last time, I have not talked to anyone from DPW, and I won't. Um, if you all feel like citizens, that so is if that's good enough, um, you know, I will follow your lead on that. That's our biggest concern: is that the water's just going to come rushing right down to our <laughs> well, I'm 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 hopeful that uh, that Public Works is is taking all of that very seriously. And Meredith, in your conversations with with DPW, has this specifically come up? Um, it, not necessarily specifically the water flowing across the road. I mean, that's something that they're trying to avoid. And Zach's initial comments from um, April 30th had a note about. Um, potentially requiring better, deeper ditching on right. the uphill side of Town Hill Road there so that the water actually stays in the ditch as it continues down beyond mats. Right, so I, I mean, that, that would be my concern is right. that you didn't just have the thing bubbling over, um, you know, after you get the three and a half inches and now, oops, it's four inches this time. Yeah, yeah and I think, Matt, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you, I can't remember if you, I think at the last meeting, you said that you'd be willing to, to, to ditch that more if it was needed to meet the standards for DPW. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and, that's right. Yeah. And those will be how much more that needs to be ditched would be something that's in the purview of the DPW permit that comes after this one. Um, you know, because they're, they're going to, they're responsible for making sure that it doesn't wipe out their culverts further downstream as well. Right. So that's that's the city's vested interest. So can you please just from the standpoint of process tell it tell me tell me or tell us what actually happens at DPW after we've done our thing with it. I mean we're going to be referring to DPW a lot. I mean you know they're they're the, being that this is such a water uh intensive site DPW is going to have to be very involved. Yeah, well, and that's um, one reason there's been back and forth several right. times with Zach um, on this particular project. Um, you know, there, I, I can't tell you in detail because I don't work in <laughs> over in that office, but right. once ours, once, once a zoning permit is approved, um, then the next stage is the DPW permits. They can start getting even more in depth on um, more details on exactly how um, the water is slowed with a specific type of rock as it comes out of a culvert um, and exactly how deep the ditch needs to be to match up the flows that this that the, the culvert under the new driveway is designed for to then not overwhelm the lower culvert or jump out like that's right. that is part of the construction and access permit process. Um, right. And that's one reason that, that Zach has needed information from Matthew at this point as to where these flows go and to make sure that that new ditch that goes down the um, western side of the property has those rocks in it to slow the water um, and to make sure it's a stone lined ditch, I think, so that it's not eroding out the sides of it um, because you don't want it eroding out the sides and then flowing over to the nearby properties, you need to control that water to then make sure it goes down into places where it's it can be absorbed or like in the drive, the pervious driveway um, or get into that ditch where it can be controlled. Um, you know, DPW doesn't want the water flowing across Town Hill Road because then Town Hill Road can get washed out and that's more work for them and, and, and issues for them. You know, they have, they have a vested interest in making sure that the roads don't get washed out, which means controlling that water and not letting it run across the road. Yeah. And this, this discussion we're having now is part of the public record, which should become part of DPW's uh, review. 
Yeah, they'll they'll take, you know, they will, th this is all under one sort of umbrella development permit. Both the DPW permits, our permits, even the building permit will all be in one place so that people can cross-reference everything. Um, and, D you know, Zach will be the person probably who's doing the construction and access permit because he's already familiar with this project. And with so Mr. Higgins, did you have, uh, did you want to speak to this? You you are on mute, by the way. Now you're not. Yes. I, I just wanted Great. to uh, mention to Matt that the large pine trees on his northern border have now been removed too. I don't know whether that will have any impact on his plan. Yeah, they, um, they saw some wind damage on those trees and they called it called me and said can we take the trees down and drop them on your property and i said if you're going to do it now's the time because it's not going to be as easy to do once there's a house there so i think they took the opportunity um they, they do get a lot more solar exposure i think that's what they were looking for at their house with those uh, no longer there um yeah there's also our neighbor and the people who just purchased um, Bogey. And I'm trying to remember Bogey's last name. I just met him for the first time the other day. Um, anyway, they, they purchased the property um, at 80 Town Hill Road just um, I think about a month and a half ago. And they're having the same conversation about those big five big pine trees. and. I think my wife likes those more, so I don't know. We'll see what happens with them, but they are pretty trees. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure you were aware of that. That's oh right. yeah, no, no, they asked for sure. Now, now they're trying to figure out how to get the trees out because it's too wet. <laughs> okay, thank Thanks. you. Anybody else like to be heard on this application, board members? Uh, I have one quick okay. question for Meredith. Oh, oh go ahead. Someone else. Go, go ahead. Okay. Oh, well, Claire, Claire was just uh, getting ready here. I'll, I'll ask. I'll ask her to uh, uh, to go ahead. Claire, you're on mute. No, you. you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> I was curious. Was there an expectation that there there be more information about the um, permeable? driveway um that sits kind of at the landing spot at the garage entrance and i was also curious about what happens with the runoff it seems like the the section of land kind of over on the side of the driveway that leads kind of the curves up that runoff has been addressed with that um stone lined dam or stone lined ditch and then i was just curious about the runoff that basically comes off of the front lawn onto the driveway and where that goes. Matt, do you want to uh, I can. that? Should I share screen again? See if I you can get guess. it right finally on the third try? You might guess. So runoff from the front of this house is going to land uh, right around here. It will follow the contours down. Um, at that point, it's going to cross this section of driveway at least, and then it will start flowing this way down into this side of the culvert. So anything that's captured pretty much from here over, it's going to land here. It's crowned, so actually um, a lot of this is going to land on this side of the culvert. The remainder is either going to flow here into the pervious drive, or if it's in this area, it's going to flow down and into uh, the ditch adjacent to the road. There is a, there's a five inch, and we expect um, five inches of grade between the crown of Town Hill Road and above where this culvert is. Um, so the, the driveway, you know, there's, you're not going to get water flowing directly across and then onto the road. The intention is for that flow to, the majority of it's going to come down this way. But then the crown here, some of it's going to flow kind of not almost uphill, won't be uphill, but um, relative to all the other contours, it's going to flow uh, towards this end of the culvert. 
Great, thank you. And I, I guess, uh, Meredith, is that covered in the access permit, that kind of crowning and just assurance that the um, runoff isn't going to come just like straight down the driveway down into Town Hill Road? Yeah, and that'll be, that's part of um, the, the the dipping down into the driveway, I think, is part of the VTRAN standards as well. It um, is. That the, that the DPW will apply as part of the um, construction and access permit. They'll get into the nitty gritty of that. Um, and our um, access provisions mandate that the zoning approval is that the access will be in compliance with the Department of Public Works access standards as well as the VTRAN standards. So they're just incorporated in here. Um, and I think that you have somewhere on the drawings from um, Rainier, I think there was a, a, you know, the VTRAN's standard was referenced. Um, and so there's, there's a, if, if for some reason something were constructed in a way that did not comply with the VTRAN standard, um, it would be a zoning permit violation as well as the DPW permit violation. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, could uh, we go back to full screen, please? Stop it. There you go. Okay, uh, Rob, did you uh, have something you wanted to uh, address? Yeah, just a quick question for uh, Meredith. I just didn't know if um, the prior uh, subdivision, uh, this was part of a subdivision and there was any, uh, any anything that needed to be addressed. Um, it was pre, yeah, it's pre zoning in Montpelier. Or... Uh, they just, there weren't, there, there weren't any conditions or anything okay. about the prior subdivision that came into yeah. play in this. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't, the, the subdivision did not involve enough parcels to, con to trigger any, anything else. I mean, we're not doing the subdivision now, but the no, yeah, no, no. Prior yeah. subdivision, um, envision this as a parcel um, with access from Town Hill. Um, okay. And, you know, that, that, that approval um, also would not have set in stone where anybody's access or anything like that would be. That would yep. all have to be under our current regulations. Yep. So, uh, Meredith, um, refresh my memory, please, uh, with regards to, did we go through the criteria last time? We did. So we were, that's what I thought. Yeah, Just we wanted went, to, wanted we to be, yeah. So the purpose of this testimony this evening was to respond to the concerns and questions we had at the close of the uh, previous meeting, uh, where we did go through through the criteria. So now what we want to do is if we become uh, satisfied with what we have here or with what we have here in additional discussion, uh, we would go, uh, we would close this as a public meeting and then take that up in deliberative session. Okay, I'm sorry, folks, I'm just trying to get my head around this. No, uh, no worries. It was the, the exact thing that was voted on last time was whether or not people felt they had enough information. Yeah to make a decision. And there were quite so many questions still about stormwater that um, a majority said that they didn't. Th so. That's right. So I don't, I don't believe we need to go through the criteria again. We've done that. We had a request for additional material. So I'm going to ask if uh, there's additional information people wish to discuss. Anybody, board members, non-board members. Uh, Anne had her hand up. Anne? Oh, Matt, just a quick question. Sure. Where will the uh, construction entrance be? Matt? Yeah, I'm sorry. I had my window open. I didn't want to go off a of mute with the cars driving by. Um, that, was a, that, was, that, that, was, that was a pack of motorcycles, my friend. <laughs> yeah, it gets loud up here sometimes. It does. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so the construction, that that drive is the first thing that's going to get, that access is the first thing that's going to get built. Um, the alternative, when we first bring equipment onto site, uh, we're going to use the, the shared access. So like the first backhoe and the, and the front end loader are going to come in. Um, 
I think they'll be able to do a lot of the ditching, just like sitting up on that. You know how it is across from you. There's like, it's kind of steep. They have to grub those mm -hmm. stumps out first. So grubbing the stumps and ditching will happen first. Then they'll lay that culvert down. And then they're going to, we're going to have, um, we're going to bring in fill crushed gravel to, to make a decent pad. That's not going to erode. Um, because if we use the fill on site, it'll just end up washing everywhere. Um, so once that's done, then any like concrete pump trucks, um, deliveries of like uh, the, the ICF forms, lumber deliveries, all that stuff would happen through the main driveway. They wouldn't be able to get a concrete pump truck in through the that that shared drive. It's so just, the driveway where it's scheduled to be permanently is where. Yeah, basically, yeah. Once once they get the initial site done and they get the silt fence up and that that culvert in place. Every, all the other traffic is going to come in through that main driveway. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't, you know, we're trying to make provisions so we don't have to dig up the road. Um, and that's something I wanted to mention. Uh, Samuel, I have a letter actually to all you guys. It's on my printer. I was hoping to leave off on Sunday. But I do, I do you do see how there's um, there's trenching that's going to ha get have to get done for the, the sewer connection that's in that right away, Sam, between our properties and I, I don't know if that, that when they draw that line if it's going to run into one or more of those trees it's like right on the property boundary so there may be one or two of those that will also have to come down but that would be it so I just wanted to bring that up um, because that's yeah hopefully and, and they are going to have to ditch into that um, into that right away so there will be some loud excavation happening but I'll like I said, you'll, you'll have my contact information. I'll try to get your phone number so I can tell you when they're coming, assuming everything goes well with permitting. Yeah, it, it, that shouldn't be any problem. Uh, I already took down a couple of trees here, so that may help. We'll see. We'll see what goes. Yep. Okay. There's we're all set there. I would entertain a motion to close the public meeting on this application and uh, at the end of our meeting this evening to uh, adjourn to the deliberative session specifically for this application. So moved. I second. I have a motion and I'm sorry, who's saying? Gene, was that you a second? Okay. Is there any discussion? Seeing that there is none, all those in favor of the motion, I'm going to go through uh, roll call. Rob? Yes. Joe? Yes. Blair? Yes. Gene? Uh, yes. And Abby? Yes. And I also vote yes. So that motion passes and we will retake this uh, application up in deliberative session at the close of the regular meeting this evening. Okay, thank you all for uh, participating and we'll move on to the second item on our agenda this evening, which is 393 Gil Gould Hill Road uh, an informal review, and Meredith tells me that it's that it's less formal than sketch plan review, so it's pretty informal. Um, and I will uh, turn this over, to Meredith, to uh, enlighten us as to what we're what we're looking at. Alrighty, um, so. This is a little odd because it's not something that would normally have a sketch plan in a final review. Um, it's an application to build a large barn slash building um, that involves steep slopes. So it's going to need to come before the DRB. Um, there was a planning department issue with notifying abutting property owners. Um, so the newspaper public notice went out, but the mailed notices didn't get all 
dealt with pro properly. Um, and so we really didn't feel like we could just continue it completely to the next meeting in case someone showed up. Um, and because the applicant was all prepared to go, we thought that doing an informal review before the DRB so that you would have a chance to look at the application and um, give Mr. McCabe some input on what your big picture thoughts were so that in this three week break we're gonna have before the first June meeting, if he needs to make some changes, even just based on this big picture review, he can do it. Um, we were able to get comments, uh, first round comments from um, Kurt Modica, um, the assistant director, deputy director for Department of Public Works on this. And we were able to send that to Justin. Um, and if, if the board members want, I can read those out for them. Um, but I think that before that, it would be really good for Justin to give you some perspective on what what he's he's wanting to do here. Um, and if anybody wants me to share screen, let me know. Yeah, I, I definitely would like you to share screen. I'm not being able to pull it up from the uh, material that was out on the public website. Uh, I oh. don't know if anybody else is having that problem. It might just be me. Um, but yes, let's have a look at what we're looking at. Hold on. It, did did this application packet come up that I'm scrolling? Yes, I see it now. All right, I'm going to go to, I think, the site first. Or, or Justin, let me know what you want me to scroll to. Uh, Meredith, I think, yeah, that should that should work as a, as a starting point. Okay. So, so could you near, oh, go ahead. No, I'm sorry, Justin, you're, you're the owner and the applicant here? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. I think Kevin, does he have to be sworn in? No, this is informal. This is, uh, we're just talking. Yep. Right on. It's like coffee hour. Right on. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Uh, a little late for coffee hour in my book, but we'll Decaf. take it anyway. Decaf. <laughs> so just to orient everybody, um, you can see the current um, residents um, there with the trucks uh, sort of in the upper right hand corner. Um, there is a long switchback driveway that extends down and then back up um, to Gould Hill Road. Um, we've lived at this property for about seven years now. Um, it's a 10 acre parcel with about one acre on the Gould Hill side and nine acres that abut uh, North Branch Park um, across a small um, class three river uh, or stream. Um, the barn is gonna go and, uh, yep, thank you for highlighting that Meredith is, is right there. So it is a monitor barn um, monitor barns are typically two-story, so it has a first drive-in level, which will come right off of the um, right off of the drive, and then there will be a top level, um, which in this case will be a wood shop um, for myself. It has a what would you consider a walkout basement, which is actually where the steep slopes come in, come into play um, in this. Yeah, so taking that down there. So as you can see, those double doors there is a drive-in area. And on the back side there, that would actually that's actually open on the back side where um, I have a I have a tractor and it will drive in uh, into that spot. Um, but that hillside there is fairly steep, um, and hence why we're why we're talking today. So where would this be if I'm dropping I'm on Gould Hill Road at U thirty? If you get off of if you get off of U Gould Hill, you get on to Gould Hill Road from Elm Street. Yep. You're going to go about you're going to go about a third of the mile. So you're going to get up to the gravel portion. You're going to do a couple little turns and there's going to be a, a house that kind of dips. You'll see you would see it if you look down the hill. So um, Steve Seats lives across the street from me. If you're familiar with Steve and. Uh, Lynn. Thank you. I know exactly where you're talking about. Right. Okay. So I live right you're across on, the street. From I am now oriented. Sorry. Perfect. Yep. Perfect. So we're stuck kind of in a little gully. Um, that's where the house is. Um, and you know, from Gould Hill all the way down to the river that is on our property, it's a fairly, um, it's a fairly good slope all the way down that way. Yeah, yep, yeah, sure is. So um, we did have some comments from um, DPW, both all of which I think are reasonable um, in terms of their scope. There was a little bit of silt fence, fence moving and then making sure that the, any stormwater runoff doesn't go on to uh, Steve and Irina Gould's um, Gould's property, which is the one we abut to on the south. Uh, 
I can so. go back to your screen anytime, but I wanted to make sure we could see each other for questions. Yeah, that was that was a good intro. Uh, Meredith, so uh, what what journey has it been on uh, in in the DPW process at this point? So, um, so Monica, deputy, deputy director has seen the full package of plans. Um, and he had really three main comments. Um, the silt barrier location, as Justin said, that um, he wanted that adjusted. Um, and that the drain line that's shown on the plans, he had concerns that it would impact the adjoining property. So they'd really refer prefer that that drain line just head towards the back of the parcel towards the southeast. Um, and then the other big comment he had was that there wasn't a specific grading plan per se that really showed all the different grading work um, submitted with the application package, but that um, because this is a, a more rural neighborhood um, and that there's no risk to municipal infrastructure and or private property once that drain line is moved, that DPW didn't feel like they needed to review one, um, that they didn't need a more detailed grading plan at this point for this project, especially because, I mean, it's not, yes, there's some impact on steep slopes, but it's more that the, the barn is being set into the steep slopes with a little bit of grade change to, to make it match in and, and what potential impact could it have on the next door neighbor uh the grades itself not really i think it was more the the stormwater okay and so and so dpw does not have a concern with with its impact on the ceases property no no um okay. and so this is this is this is good this is good i mean i want to make sure we have that kind of commentary for the for the potential applicant. So, you know, because that would be the kind of thing that could really throw a project uh, off if, if, we right. if the, you were not clear going into it. Yeah. Well, and the, the package, um, for anybody who didn't get a chance to review it, the package does have engineer stamped um, site plans, slopes analysis, engineered foundation drawings, um, all of those check boxes are all here. Yeah, I reviewed it. It's pretty well detailed. And, and I told I enjoyed, them. I enjoyed actually looking at the at the engineering designs. Pretty good, well, man. Well, we already have also all of the uh, items needed for the building permit as well. I pulled that all out of here, so you wouldn't have to see all of those details as well. It's a, it's a. There's a lot of information in here. Okay, so Justin, this is a this is a very informal yep. review. We're, trying, we're just trying to get commentary that would be useful as you right. develop your project. Um, so, is there board members anything further you'd like to like to uh, leave the applicant with? No. I have I have no. a couple of, I have a couple of comments or questions. Um, Claire, please go ahead. Hi, Justin. Um, hi, I had um, a couple of questions about the existing vegetation and any landscaping plans and revegetation of any cleared areas, and then the other question was about how far away it is from the stream. Yeah, so, okay, so in terms of, of existing vegetation, um, there is some random bushes on that slope um, that will be removed in the process of, of the barn installation. We've tried very carefully to position the barn in between um, an existing ash tree and an existing uh, um, red maple. And so the excavator and the, the company has assured me that those can stay. So we've tried to keep those in place as much as possible. The grading will be in sort of in, in line with what's there. And then hopefully we'll be replanting with, you know, um, grasses and shrubs that are native and, and local to the area to, to keep that all that grading in place. The, the back of the barn is, I would posit a um, hundred plus feet to the river, at least, if not more. 
Okay, thank you. Yeah, I guess I was I was curious because it seemed like DPW's comments were about um, what erosion impacts on neighboring properties, but I was thinking kind of more on what would the impacts be like on the the stream if that was down down below. Yeah, it would it would it would actually be running. So any stormwater runoff, um, it whatever comes currently through there runs down into my yard. And then across, um, uh, you sort of just, I guess it sort of flows back in through the wooded areas that's back there. There's a couple of um, elevation drops that it would have to go through. But honestly, I mean, it's very dry back there. So I think it seeps in and then finds its way underground to the river, such as it goes, based upon my current experience. Thanks. Sure. So if there's uh, uh, nothing else, we'll move on. Anybody? I just wanted to say something real quick. I just heard you say that you're you're taking pains to save an ash tree, and I just wanted to oh. ask if you take into account that that ash tree probably isn't long for this world, uh, given the emerald ash borer and its presence in Vermont yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, we have we have a uh, we have about four or five very large ash trees on the property that that we've sort of held on to. I had. Uh, Lincoln Earl Centers from Sylvan Tree Care over um, to look at them and his opinion was they just sort of wait until the emerald ash borer actually gets to them um, before they take them down. It's fortunate because the the distance between the barn and our house is significant so there's plenty of spot plenty of space for us to drop it in a way that will be safe and won't impact either structure so okay great but my wife would really hurt me if I tried to take it down right now I understand. <laughs> There's a lot of very nice white ash trees which have have bit the dust or are going to bit, right. bit the dust yeah, very, very soon. Yep. Unfortunate. Okay. So, well, Justin, I hope we've uh, been helpful. Absolutely. And thank you very much for your time this evening. Hope okay. you all take care. You're thank welcome. You. Bye. Thank you, Justin. Yep. Thank you, Meredith. Bye-bye. So Meredith, I seem to have lost my agenda among the 20 or 50 uh, screen sh screens I have open here. Oh, wait, here it is. Nope. Uh, let me, give me one second. I want to send the DRB deliberative session link out to you all. Um, I was just giving you to send that and then we'll- Well, I'm just trying to, I want to look at the agenda so I know- Other business is next. It's other business. It's summer schedule and next meeting date is what's coming up next. Um, okay, well, just bear me with me. I'm sorry. I'm That's okay. A little bit of a curmudgeon. I really like to see what I'm getting into. Um, and the next meeting date is in June seventh. Right. Yep. I'm not going to find it. Hold on. Hold on. I can just share it. Um, so that you can, everybody can see it. Give me one minute. I've got my meeting packet, but I got to scroll up to the top. Right. So we're oh, yes, very good. Okay, so there we go. We're past number eight. Other business, summer schedule. So yeah. Meredith, would you like to speak to that? I would. Um, so we'll be sending out an email to all the DRB and DRC members about this, um, but I wanted to make sure I brought it up tonight. Um, the big calendar that we sent around in January, or maybe even December, for this year's meeting schedule has an error on it. Um, the first July meeting will not be Monday, July 5th. That is the holiday for July 4th, so all of City Hall Bill will be shut down. So we'll be meeting the following, the, the immediately following Tuesday, Tuesday, July 6th. Um, so that's a correction. You'll get an email, but I wanted to make sure we talked about it. Um, and then the other thing to note is that we have decided to cancel the first meeting of August. So the August 2nd uh, meeting will not be held um, so that in large part so I can take a vacation. Um, but because <laughs> um, I need a little bit of a break by then. Um, but so that will give everybody else a break so that you can plan time away to 
Um, so we'll just have one meeting in August, but this will, I'll follow up with an email. Okay, and, and uh, can you give us just sort of a general sense of when we might actually be um, meeting together again? Yep, so um, what we're, what the city is thinking about is that probably July um, would be the earliest that meetings would be in person again. Um, city council is going to go to in person meetings is my understanding other committees and boards can decide if they're going to go completely in person or do a hybrid where members stay remote, but I'm there in person for any applicants or members of the public that want to show up. Um, and so, you know, the thought is ha keep thinking about this over the next three weeks. And it might be a, you know, the June 7th meeting during deliberative session, board members have a vote or a discussion, or we can talk about it in deliberative session tonight a little bit, um, and then have a, have a decision on if the board wants to go back full in person um, or, or otherwise. Um, it's going to be the, the board's decision on what they want to do and what members feel comfortable doing. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know how many how many members are fully vaccinated or not. Um, that comes into play in how we would manage meeting in person, right? Because um, if there are some people who are either high risk or um, not getting vaccinated, then they there would probably be mass requirements there. It's it's a logistical question. Um, mm -hmm. Right. So you're saying you're saying that we could actually, as a board, be voting on this in by June seventh. Yep, potentially, or the second potentially. meeting. Or the but second meeting. Yep. Okay, well, you know, it's coming right up. Yep, so we've got three weeks before our next meeting, um, but it's something to think seriously about during those three weeks. Absolutely. Okay. Um, again, my agenda has uh, has flown, but I don't need it. I don't need it. There's nothing else on it, right? Just the journey. There's nothing else on there, but Rob seems to have a question. Oh, yes, Rob. Well, I just would say, since we're all on the air, uh, I will be uh, fully vaccinated by the next meeting, and I would encourage uh, everybody uh, to go get uh, go get vaccinated. Um, it's uh, yeah, but that's not all I had to say. Um, well, I, I, now now I, now I can't help but editorialize a little bit. I, I mean, it's such a relief, folks. I yeah. mean, you know, <laughs> when you press when you get past that second shot in two weeks, it's like yes. So, um, <clears throat> so um no i just want to do uh to, to just uh since the public's here and whatnot um you know i think when i first joined the drb i uh you know made, made it clear that i work um you know for an industry that uh you know under under some instance may uh become before the board and be involved i've changed jobs i'm now working for um you know vhb engineering firm with offices in uh montpelier and burlington um and uh if i were ever to feel i was even remotely close to uh um, involved in an application that came before the board, I would, um, you know, let everyone know. So I just wanted to disclose that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Rob. So I'll entertain a motion to close the public session and uh, 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 move to a deliberative session. Second. Do Motion, sorry, we motion to close the session. Okay, G motion from Gene, and do I have a second? Second. Second by Joe. All those in favor, well, I'm gonna go through the roll again. Claire. Yes. Abby. Yes. Rob. Yes. Gene. Yes. Joe. Yes. And I also vote yes. So see you all. And, uh, and Meredith, you're going to send us a link here in the next minute or two? Yeah, I sent it at 8.09. Um, okay. Feel free to give me a call if you don't get that email. So that okay. I can... I'm, going to, I'm going to ask that we reconvene at, it's now 8.15, at 8.20. Okay. Five minutes, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you, have, you have my phone number, right? 
Yes. Oh. Okay, great.